Welcome to this lazy Sunday afternoon's teardown slash um, recycling video. Here we got a Cyber Home CH DVD 401 uh, MP3 DVD player and whatnot, which I got from the trash bin. And um, the reason why I took it is because I want to see what kind of um, video uh, encoder chip it uses and maybe reuse that for um, composite video generation for another project. So let's have a look inside. There we go. The device is mostly made, of, uh, made up out of the optical drive. There is maybe a single, a single main PCB underneath here, as you can see, the, the green one. It, uh, it only stretches, stretches this long and it both integrates the, the main SOC, I presume, and the controller for the optical drive. And there's your um, requisite Chiba's power supply. As you can tell, it's, um, it's a um, single-sided board construction with um, no um, stop mask. And just, um, yeah, just the bare minimum of components. Um, unfortunately, someone cut the cable. So um, maybe let's, let's just go uh, quickly over it and what the issue might be and um, then we'll uh, see if we can get this to work and see what the what the composite video codec is and what it does. I hope it's not integrated into the main SOC. That would be bad. But as it turns out and with the, all the other DVD solutions, uh, there's more or less, uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty likely that there is a box standard video codec chip in there and we'll, we'll find out soon. So it appears they um, had this uh, combined um, common mode differential mode noise filter for the primary side. Um, they, these usually have a significant amount of strain inductance so you uh, can uh, kill both the, the common mode and the differential mode board with the same stone. And uh, just by looking at the components you can tell what they're used for. Uh, these go to the, the two mains wires uh, to chassis ground. Uh, those are just the, uh, the common mode noise bypass caps. Uh, and they, in conjunction uh, with the main common mode filter, uh, provide uh, the, the primary filtering stage for the input. And this is just a capacitor um, in parallel uh, to, the, to the output side of the uh, common mode filter, followed by a, a full bridge rectifier main uh, storage capacitor. And uh, as you can tell, it's uh, 400 volts, so it's, um, it's uh, 85 to 265 volts. And... Um, yeah, not, 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 much, not much happening there. Um, now, going into the details, this is a um, uh, SGS Thompson uh, Viper 22A um, uh, current mode uh, switching controller. That's um, the data sheet for it. It's really a straightforward part. It integrates um, uh, a Sense MOS um, main switch. So that's, um, that's the MOSFET with the extra tab for current sensing. And it has current mode control, and it has all the startup circuitry and oscillator and stuff integrated. So yeah, minimal, bare minimal uh, component count solution, and uh, they they had the, the courtesy of adding an RCD filter here. There's uh, uh, most most likely it's an it's an RCD filter because uh, what else might these components be used for? You have a small uh, high frequency inductor, and there's your your RC filter and the diode. Really, that's, that's all that is happening right here. And then you have the primary to secondary uh, bypass capacitor that is for um, the capacitively coupled um, uh, noise that's being generated on the primary side or at the switching node in particular. And this couples as a common mode noise uh, to the secondary side. And this capacitor in, co um, in conjunction with uh, hopefully some inductive components on the secondary side uh, is used to return, as a, mainly to isolate from the secondary side and this capacitor to return the ripple current back to the primary side, or the, the ground rail of the primary side in that case. And then there's just um, a rectifier diode and uh, some really disgusting looking blown uh, capacitors. You might have to replace that one because it bulged out. And then there's your 5 volt and 12 volt um, power supply. It's uh, almost like those Molex uh, power supply uh, cables. 
and the rest is just GBAS quality is the same <laughs> as the rest of the board, the whole assembly. There's your your front panel buttons, um, and the rear panel is just um, with uh, with riser connectors mounted uh, to the PCB underneath. So let's see if we can get some life back into it and see what what it actually does. And what do you know? Something actually does happen when you turn it on. So I haven't yet um, measured the power supply rails. But there's, um, yeah, there's some action going on there. See? Well, that's actually good news. So, unfortunately now we halfway took it apart, but we did turn it on, just out of curiosity. Well, um, now, uh, wh where was I going? All right, I want to see the composite video coding. So, let's get that CD back out and turn it off. And we'll proceed. And that's where we're going. Oh, just a quick remark. Look at here. There is uh, the U3, that's your TL431 voltage reference, a shunt regulator. Um, just an optocoupler and um, lots of capacitors, small filter inductor. So um, maybe it's actually something more going on because the rails uh, I've measured them are 11.5 volt and um, 5 volts. Uh, so uh, 5 volt is um, regulated to within 1%. So I assume there's a 5 volt LDO hidden on the other side. Let's see. No, they were just joking. No regulator. So uh, I assume the primary voltage, um, the primary output voltage is the 5 volt rail, and the 12 volt rail is just a, a secondary. And the topology that they chose is um, a forward converter, more likely than a flyback converter. But we'll, uh, we'll have to investigate. So all they're doing is um, single phase rectification with this um, D7 diode there. That's all basically there is to it, and there's a small um, filter inductor L3 in series to it, and the bypass capacitor. So it's actually just building a, a Pi filter for the 5 volt rail. That's, that's ridiculous. That's borderline ridiculous. Or maybe that's that's actually the yeah no that's the 12 volt rail. So interesting. So they are just um, just using. Um, uh, a sec an auxiliary winding for the uh, dual fold rail, and just single phase rectifying it, filtering its uh, its noise, and um, putting a little bit more effort into the uh, five fold rail. So it's mainly running off of five fold, and the twelve fold is just for for kicks. There you have it. That's all there is to it. That's how you build a cheap power supply. But they didn't they didn't get everything wrong. So you're seeing um, seeing some um, star ground configuration here. There's also some uh, referencing going on. They added um, these exposed copper areas for for higher power current ca uh, carrying capability, or maybe even for, uh, for thermal reasons, as it seems. So the, the whole side, all the all those pins are connected in parallel. And they are most likely just um, on the on the drain and or source side of this chip. Yeah, that's how they do it. So all those connected in parallel are just the the drains, and there are also two pins um, connected um, in parallel. Those are the source pins. And that's what you'd expect. And that's the the diode side. So surprisingly, they're just um, doing it around the, the pins of the power component side. I assume this is for for thermal purposes. And this is um, this uh, area is connected to the tap of the diode and the heatsink, and that's where your common mode noise goes to. This is chassis ground, which um, is also connected on this side via the via the, the, the hex bolts. Right, 
And that's basically all there is to it. That's the main uh, SOC chip with its uh, Titan memory. That's that's flash memory. That's some uh, SD RAM from Winbond, and um, some uh, auxiliary stuff. That's the uh, motor controller. Um, good question for which motor? Because uh, you'd expect this uh, to be a controller for a fancy BLDC motor, but all you can see this is uh, just brush uh, brush motors, brush DC motors. There's a third one there. So that's basically all there is to it. Let's um, see if we can look at the parts. This one actually looks. So while this appears to be mostly, uh, most likely a two chip solution for the DVD player and uh, decoding, there's an SOC and there is an auxiliary chip perhaps for, um, for the video generation and all the, um, and the audio video stuff involved with different formats. Uh, there's little to no information and um, yeah, it's quite closed source, um, so you can't find a data sheet and people in repair forums um, going back and forth trying to figure out how the chip works and not going getting anywhere and you most likely can't just buy it um, new. So maybe on AliExpress or Alibaba or uh, IC2IC or some, some business, business platforms. But um, this uh, AA1 um, 5954 or uh, AI5954 uh, is um, most likely a Chinese uh, analog to um, to this guy here. It's um, it's a interpion semiconductor. Never heard of these, but um, the package is the same. It's a 28 plus um, a heat fans a heat sink uh, fans um, package. It's just a, a small outline package with uh, thermal enhancement, and um, this is this is quite spot on um, what you'd expect. It's a four-channel motor driver with um, yeah analog output circuitry, or maybe just a PWM and uh, lots of comparators. But um, yeah, most likely what you'd expect. So let's do the guesswork. There are two DC motors. They don't have any other drivers. One is for uh, speed control, um, one drives the disk, and one is just for opening uh, the drive and closing it. And, um, all right, we need another motor, but yeah, wh where do we put that? So maybe one doesn't have a direct uh, connection to the drive, or maybe this chip here is just um, another, it has uh, 357 written on it, don't know what it is. Maybe that's just another motor driver. But you'd also need, um, you need two uh, precisely controlled channels for the uh, optical servo drive uh, that um, uh, moves the lens around. Uh, one is uh, for the um, for the transverse uh, correction that uh, positions the the read laser in a, in a certain track, and um, the other is the z action uh, z axis action that uh, focuses the lens and um, adjusts uh, for the for the distance of the lens to the surface. So. All it does is focus the uh, laser. So there you have it. The rest, um, those two are your um, five, uh, four double five eight op amps, and this is um, most likely timing generator IC for the for the SCART interface. And um, yeah, that sums it up. Unfortunately, I can't use the chip because there's no data sheet for it, and I'm really not into going into this gory details probing around the, the proprietary interface to it. So maybe I'll just use one of those analog devices chips. See, basically just something like this. It's just uh, fed with um, uh, three 8-bit lines for, for the R, B and G values and um, some timing stuff. That's clock, it has uh, reference white level, it has blanking and synchronization and it just outputs um, your R, G and B channels or composite video channel. That's all there is to it. It's uh, just not that popular, apparently. Or maybe too pricey. All right, thanks for watching. Don't, should have just looked at the data sheet. So this is exactly the chip that's been used. Uh, and you can see there's an actuator driver, there's a load and sled motor channel, and there's the focus actuator. And when you move a little bit further down, there's a servo signal processor and 
that goes into the error amps. And there you go, this is your one chip solution for a DVD drive.